Hey guys, and welcome back to Eden. So, let's just jump right back in. If something like this were to happen closer to the cottage, with that thought in mind, I couldn't afford to stray very far away from Sion. Or, would it be safer to bring her along? No. Take her far away. Sion? She looked at me, her face expressionless. Far away. Yes. All the way to the spaceport. What are you saying? Oh no. Oh, Sion, no. Thank you for everything you've done for me, Ron. For indulging my limits this far. I'm asking you to clarify. Pardon me trying to remain as calm as possible, but still in the lead. The Rao Haruna, who used to be a soldier, had surfaced. He was trying, or and was trying to analyze the situation in a collective manner. I'm saying, this is the end. Head to the port with Maya, and free yourself from the ascending world. Why? An indistinct uh, smile rose to her face. In the dark of night, she alone seemed to be the only point of light. I wanted a replacement for Alicia. And no, I wanted to atone. I wanted a chance to atone for the sins from your childhood. Not that I consider those acts a sin. Both of us pretended we're a, fa or we're a family to replace someone we lost. We have to put an end to this twisted relationship of ours. I'm sure it will end even if left alone. But by then it may be too late. You know I have no intention of leaving, right? I was fine with things that way too. Truly, I even believed I wanted you to stay with me. If Maya hadn't come along, I may have remained selfish to the very end. But you have a future just like Maya. A long, long future is waiting. And I found myself thinking it was to divert your eyes from that fact. That's why you have to go. To a place where you can make a future for yourself. I don't have anywhere to go back to. Her words, so full of conviction, grated on my nerves. I betrayed the military. I turned out, or I turned a gun on my partner, and I couldn't protect my sister. Let Alicia die. Even the major was gone. I had nobody left. No, or nothing left to achieve, and nothing left to protect. I'm not going anywhere. There isn't a single place in existence I want to go either, so... What you seek doesn't have to be a place. What you should really pursue is a future and a dream. Nothing like that exists for me. I've thrown everything away. You'll find a way as long as you're alive. The tides are strong. My strength only exists to protect you. Don't decide that all on your own. Sion remained utterly calm and gently rejected my opinion. In the, uh, the end cannot be avoided. However, you mustn't bring your own life to an end here. I'm not. I chose to protect you. You should know that. No. Don't turn me into an excuse for you to run away from reality. You're wrong. If I stayed here, then someday... In the not-too-distant future, I would die. It wasn't as if I doubted that in any way. I'd like to pick up the pl I'd like to pick the place I die. No, I've already chosen. No, your death is a long, long way away. You've atoned, so it's time to move on. Find a new beginning room. There's surely a place that needs you. This is goodbye. Goodbye. Though her tone was calm, it contained a strength which wouldn't allow me to refuse. Sion had her mind set on how her days would end, the same as I had. That was what I thought, but I couldn't say it aloud. I knew she had committed to this long ago. If there was anything I could say right now, there might be no point in asking her this now, but I had to say it. I clutched my fists and opened my mouth. What am I to you? Do I mean so little to you that you can say goodbye like that so easily? No. Her voice echoed with dignity, and she shook her head over and over again. 
though it was an extremely short time. I was led by your hand, protected by your back, and was able to live in peace. That was likely something nobody but you could do. I feel this way because you're you, and I'm saying goodbye because you're you. I'm really glad Maya came. I was held prisoner by this life which was like a dream to me, and nearly did something irredeemable. My feelings for you grew too strong, and I lost sight of something even more important. Sion's lips trembled a little. It was just like that time. Just like that time she said goodbye to Alicia. However, unmoving, I could still uh, sense the intense emotion just beneath, uh, just beneath her face. I'm begging you, please understand. Understand my wish. A string of tears trickled down her cheeks and glistened under the moonlight. No! Zion, why? I don't want you to die. Her tears would not stop. Oh, no. The feeling which poured from her continued to soak her pristine white cheeks. Zion. You lived my life so I could protect her, so I could protect everyone. Or I lived my life so I could protect everyone. But now, it's for you and only you. My one wish is for you to live. Is that really what you want? Sion silently nodded and wiped her face with those tiny hands of hers. But she bit her lip and rubbed her cheeks over and over again. I could see the determination on her face, now dirtied with the traces of her tears. Sorry to put this all on you, but this is the last thing I will ever wish for. She whispered that and looked up at the sky. Beyond the sky where the moon and that red star shine, lay the future she had created. Ah, uh, no. Could there be a place for me there as well? It was her wish that I find somewhere new that I belonged and live on. What she said was most likely right. In which case, I... No, Rogue, don't do it. The mountain was astir again. I couldn't hear much else besides the sounds of the wind rocking the treetops. But the mountain itself it certainly felt like it was shaking. Be that as it may, I didn't sense any impending crisis. I guess we're... Or we're all right for tonight. I didn't want to stray far from the cottage. It seemed best to head back for now. I turned around and started to go back to the road from which we came. My stride was heavy. I felt as if lead weight sat at the bottom of my knees. It was almost like I didn't want to go home. I don't want you to die! Don't want me to die, huh? Ever since we came to this mountain, when we settled into our new lives, Sion had feared for my future. She must have known that I didn't know what to do with the freedom I'd obtained. It hadn't been a lie that I wanted to protect her. But, if I was going to be honest, even if I didn't protect her anymore, all that was left for her was to wait until her time came, now that the military had backed off. Why was I here? Sion, who cried and told me she wouldn't let me die, or wouldn't let me die. If I stayed, her presence would only make her regret everything. I wanted Sion's heart to be at peace. After finally escaping, smiling, and getting to walk around outside, the last thing I wanted to do was make her suffer. That was what Alicia and I desired. I closed my eyes against the piercing wind that suddenly blew past. That cold, dry wind which blew without end. What I saw when I managed to open my eyes. Amazing, bro. It's so amazing. Zion, wait! Don't run like that! Wait! What's so amazing about it? That was us, once upon a time. 
Zion jogging lightly up the hill and me chasing after her. That was... The wind, the sky, and the green! It doesn't tell me anything. Yes, it was when we first made it to the mountain. The first time I climbed the hill with Zion. The day it became her favorite spot. The wind changes this drastically depending on the location. Zion asked me after she climbed almost to the summit, gasping for breath. Her expression hadn't changed much from the usual, but there was no doubt she was excited. It's a little cold, but I guess the wind does feel nice. Yeah, I think the wind here is gentler than it was anywhere else on our journey. The look on her face as she stood there, her hair ravished by the wind, was like she was in, her, or in a world of her own. Although she was still tired from our journey, Zion was teeming with life this day. Thank you, Ro. Huh? There were times when I was a little nervous about where you were going to take me, but... I like this place. I like your home. You see, her words made me happy. The fact that my home... No different from the day I'd left, pleased her. The fact that she had accepted this place as her safe haven. And most of all, I was happy that she was smiling. If I'm here, it won't be lonely. I'm sure I'll be able to smile. Sion basked in the wind, practically speaking to herself. It seemed as though she made no wings on her back, catch the wind, and fly away any second. I remembered. This was the moment I first felt like I had met the real Sion. It was like some miracle that you were there, free as the wind. Bro? What is it? You're just like the wind too. You gently wrapped around me and carried me all the way here. Thank you, Bro. Thank you. When she smiled back then, I felt a pain deep in my heart. Surely, I must have had an inkling. An inkling that she would someday lose that smile. Her face had become cloudy with tears. Sion had said goodbye, offering me a future with both her wish and an act of kindness. And now, the surreal journey was over. No, it should have ended ages ago. Had we simply turned a blind eye to that reality? Had I accomplished everything I had to do here? Sis. Alicia. Major. Have I done enough? Will the final gift I give Sion be to choose the future and live my life? I washed my face with cold water to drive away the sleepiness. I saw a few whiskers popping out of my chin when I looked in the mirror and promptly shaved them away. Now I was ready for the day. Now then. I muttered to myself, but as I was going or, but as I was about to leave the washroom, the door opened. Um Morning. Morning. Maya had a bit of a long face. It didn't look like she was just drowsy. Can we switch? Yeah, I'm all done. Maya and I swapped places, and she walked into the washroom. Hey. Hmm? Is today really going to be the last? I stopped in place and faced her. I stared straight at her melancho or melancholic expression. It's just like I said. I'll take you as far as the spaceport. I'll have to stow away, so we'll part ways there. I... I should be fine on my own. I did make it all the way here on my own. Conditions change with every passing moment. There's no guarantee our destruction will come slowly. It's entirely possible. Um, it's gaining speed. 
there was also that mysterious shock wave we had to consider. If you travel alone, you could die. I've taken that into consideration. According to Maya, a senior colleague of hers was flying around the planet to capture the final state of the world on film. Apparently, that colleague would be taking the final colony ship as well, and she was arranging to come meet her somewhere nearby by helicopter. It may be nearby, but you won't be able to cover that distance in a day or two. I'm more ragged than I look. I learn, I learn more than just how to write an article for my uncle, you know. I know that. My traps hadn't been the most sophisticated, but she made it through them unscathed. I had no problem admitting she had quite the aptitude for coping with danger. Either way, it's not just your problem. That's the part I don't get. Why did you suddenly decide to leave? And why just you? Who knows? What, you won't tell me? Sorry, I can't even explain it clearly to myself. For some reason, I didn't feel like telling her that Sion was crying. I believed that I should keep the final wish of the frail girl everyone believed to be the strongest of all, locked away in the depths of my heart. Besides, I doubted anyone would understand, even if I did tell them. How her tearful goodbye had shaken my heart. By the way, Maya. Yes? You never did tell me to go with you. If Cyan had said she would go to the port, then of course you would have to come along, too. That's why I never said anything. You never imagined this outcome, huh? I still don't really believe it. Maya furled her brows, doubtfully. It had been three days since Cyan bid me farewell. In the end, I couldn't refuse and had decided to travel with Maya. We had plans to leave tomorrow as long as nothing out of the ordinary happened again. I couldn't be sure these feelings were real. I could feel my heart wavering inside me. Where would these th or where would these feelings lead me? And what was on her mind this very moment? A heavy silence fell upon us at the breakfast table. Sion hadn't spoken much these past three days. Even when addressed, she was inattentive and didn't or did not respond. Maya had gotten timid and couldn't bring herself to speak anymore. The three of us did no more than eat um, our frugal breakfast with white rice, fried eggs, and salad. Which reminded me, Sion still couldn't make anything besides fried eggs. Yesterday and the day before, I had or I made multiple trips to the nearby town and collected as much preserved food as I could find and left it for her. Food shouldn't be a problem for a while as long as she didn't mind the taste. Still, when I pictured her eating bland f or bland food all alone, S say, um, Haruna, what is it? Um, <laughs> never mind. Maya sunk into silence, looking disheartened, and scarfed down the, her remaining side dishes. Sion, on the other hand, kept her chopsticks moving at her own steady pace, almost like Maya and I were invisible to her. There was plenty I had to worry about when I came to the fields, too. Thinking about it logically, it would seem impossible for Sion to maintain them all on her own. So, what will you do? I'm sure Sion remembers exactly how to tend to the fields. Mentally, I'm sure. She'll be in big trouble when she tries to do it for real. She shrugged, looking astounded. Speaking of Sion, she was off on her own, digging into the dirt with a shovel. It was a part of the field that had been harvested and was currently out of the rotation an empty plot. Even if she can't, there's plenty of food at the cottage. She should get best somehow. There's something I'd like to ask you. What? What in the world is your and Sion's relationship exactly? That's a rather sudden question. 
I gazed at Sion, silently digging her way to the pitch black soil. A girl I'd met while on my journey, chasing after my sister, whose circumstances were similar. To Sion, I was a mere replacement for Alicia, who should have been the one to take her away. Me, who despite all my who despite my confidence in my abilities, was nothing but a soldier in the end. She who produced the ships which brought hope to mankind. By all rights, neither of us had any common ground to speak of. Sion decided this would be her resting place. She made that decision of her own free will. There's no need for me to follow her lead. That doesn't sound like something the person who protected her all this time would say. It's Sion's wish. I'm sure I told you. Sion's will cannot be bent. Maya suddenly took a step towards me, but this is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!